Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Dr. David Hausman with Stronghold Health. Hey guys, Dr. John Negley here, also with Stronghold Health. Awesome, so we're excited because today we're gonna to be discussing toxicity with you. Um, toxicity is an interesting topic because I feel like it's kind of vague and mute point. A lot of people, when, it, when you hear the word toxicity, they just think, oh, like heavy metals or something crazy and extreme. When in all actuality, a lot of us are experiencing toxicity in our bodies and we might not even know it. Yep. So for instance, if, if, if I were experiencing toxicity, Dr. John, what might be some of the symptoms that are telltale sign that my body has a toxic burden? Yeah, uh, I mean, a number of them could be, you know, chronic fatigue, uh, digestive issues, sleeping okay. problems, um, excessive weight gain, weight loss. Um, what about outside of weight gain, weight loss? Like, what if, uh, what if I'm having a tough time getting rid of weight? So uh, try diets, calorie counting, a and lot And that's of obviously a, a really important one. A lot of people don't know about it is that uh, oftentimes toxins are stored in the fat cells uh, okay. and it's very difficult to get rid of toxic fat cells. Yeah, so when when our body is toxic, I think we should probably back up a little bit and just like a lot of people, fundamental 30,000 foot view when we're talking about toxicity, you're, what we're talking about is things that come into your body, either it's something you're eating, something you're putting on your skin, something you're breathing in as an inhalant, our body has to be able to process what gets put in and be able to effectively get rid of the waste and get, get it out of our body. We have an organ in our body that's responsible primarily for that and it's called the liver. Right, so what Dr. John was referring to here with, with fat cells in our body storing toxins is when your liver is inadequate, your liver is unable to take care of the toxic burden and it has to use a backup or a failsafe if your liver isn't functioning properly to get rid of the excess toxins that it can't get rid of. And one of those defense mechanisms is to take the excess toxins that your liver can't get rid of and actually store them and buffer them in your fat cells. It's just kind of crazy to think about. So if you've been dieting, you've been calorie counting it, but you just can't seem to cut the weight and keep the weight off, part of the reason your body will have resistance to that is if you're toxic and the fat that your body wants to burn has toxins in it, it's not gonna burn that fat because it's gonna re-expose all those toxins right back into the body. Right. So one of the barriers for you at that point would be to get your liver functioning properly again so it's detoxing effectively and then your body will burn those fat cells. Most definitely. So symptoms though, we were talking about uh, weight restriction or, or inability to get rid of weight. What were some of the other symptoms that we had? Uh, chronic fatigue, uh, digestive problems, acid reflux, um, trouble sleeping. Okay, um, for the fatigue and the energy regulation, that's a big one right now that I think, like I'll just use my mom as an example. As she started getting older, later later uh, 40s into early 50s, I remember she would always just be like low energy, tired, um, lethargic, have fatigue. And she had gone and gotten hormone testing done, but hormone testing came back totally fine. For her, she was toxic. Um, she had cancer, so that would be a long-term toxicity uh, symptom that someone could be experiencing as cancer, but she was always tired and fatigued for her, it ended up being toxicity that needed to be addressed. Right. So anyway, lots of different symptoms. So if you're watching this video and you're thinking, yes, that's me, I've got tiredness, fatigue, um, I've got chronic inflammation, which is one we didn't talk about, which is uh, joint pain. Okay. So joint pain that won't go away and inflammation that just seems to stay. If you've got trouble sleeping or any of the other symptoms, then you might wanna consider doing a detox protocol or detox program. Outside of the symptoms, we also have other ways of being able to do a survey or a screen to figure out, could we potentially be toxic? So you might not, let's say you're younger, you're in your 20s, you're probably less likely to have some of these symptoms, but there's other things that you can do to figure out if you're toxic or not. And one of them is actually toxicity test. Questionnaire. Yeah, so you can take a questionnaire and do an assessment of your lifestyle, to figure out if you're toxic. Right, and you know, toxins come from a number of different areas. Number one would be environmental, then number two would be lifestyle, and then number three is internal. Uh, and obviously environmental is, you know, if you're living downtown in a major city uh, or close to a busy highway or interstate, uh, and then you have 
lifestyle, which is you know what you're consuming as far as food, alcohol, uh, over-the-counter drugs, um, prescription drugs, things of that manner, you know, all across the board, and then internally, it's how your body is functioning, right? Uh, some, some some of these questions are going to be based mostly on lifestyle choices, and you know. So some examples we have. Yeah. Uh, do you drink unfiltered tap water? Okay. So maybe uh, drinking water that's acidic, water that is fairly dirty, has trace amounts of metals right. in the water, be an easy way of getting toxins into the body you might not even be aware of. Mm -hmm. What else do we have? Um, do you use co commercialized cleaning products okay. or air fresheners? Uh, okay. Do you use furniture polish, floor wax, varnish, okay. processed so being foods? Exposed to lots of different chemicals. Right. Um, and then processed foods. Yep. Processed foods, I think I remember a stat somewhere along the lines, and I might be a little off with the number exactly, but 2,200 food additives and preservatives in the American food supply that have been banned in other countries, in the UK and in Asia, but that are allowed still in the US. Hmm. Um, then other things like Teflon nonstick cookware. Oh, or yeah. Uh, storing your food in plastic uh, containers. Teflon cookware, I just want to say something about that real quick. We, uh, my wife and I, just over Christmas break, decided to go visit the Biltmore Estate in Nashville, North Carolina. And we stayed at a hotel that was one of those uh, suites that had a kitchenette and everything like that. So we were like excited. I was at the grocery store. I'm buying a couple of groceries. She's back at the hotel still. She sends me a picture and text message and it's the Teflon pans. And all of the inside non-stick surface of it, multiple different areas had scratch off spots yep. where people that were in the hotel before were cooking, but using like a metal spatula or something like that and scraped off the Teflon metal. I texted her back and I was like, where do you think all of that metal ended up? <laughs> you know, think about it for a second. So if you are cooking with the Teflon cookware, that's actually a known source of carcinogen or toxin that you can get in the body. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's a bunch of other ones that are, you know, similar, just all along the lines of, you know, what do you consume alcohol on a regular basis? Are you over consuming alcohol? Do you use tobacco? Uh, do you like an air purification system in your house? Interesting. Uh, and then just different products that you're using on yourself, like for women, different skincare products right. or shampoos. Um, I use a lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, and then... Have you treated your pets with flea shampoo, powders, or sprays? Um, Here's an interesting one, perfumes. So that's an aerosol, something that you would breathe in that has the ability to uh, be toxic because for a lot of perfumes, they don't actually have to disclose the ingredients. In fact, I don't know of any perfume I've ever been able to look up the ingredients on it. It's not on the label. Um, so yeah, there's lots of different ways. Um, this is just one of many different types of toxicity tests that you can take. This one is lifestyle focused. There's other ones that are gonna be just asking you about symptoms. And we have both available in the office. So if you wanna take one, um, all you have to do is ask our front desk if you're in here for a regular visit. Um, anything else that you wanted to say about the topic? I think that covers pretty well. Okay, um, so in another video you can watch, we're gonna talk a little bit more specifically about how your body goes through a detox process with your liver. Um, but for right now, that's all we wanted to cover is, is why toxicity. If you are toxic, how might you know, either through symptoms or through lifestyle factors?